what's up my beautiful beautiful beauties today is sunday december 22nd job and um i haven't been too long got back from church i went to church today hold on let me try to get this angle back but anyway okay my love so i went to church today <clears throat> the word was pretty good it was just talking about how um love waits you know kind of and it was um <clears throat> uh, it was actually a word that i kind of needed you know because i just feel like as far as relationships and stuff anything worth fighting for is worth waiting um i wanted to just come and elaborate on well for those you don't know well friday I had a bad, bad anxiety attack, y'all, on Friday. Oh, my God. It was through the roof, and it lasted for about 45 minutes. But I kind of knew I probably was going to have one because I have been in so much pain in my leg, like I was explaining to y'all earlier. I've been in so much pain in my leg to work. Um, it was just like Friday. I was on the computer, blah, 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 on the computer, then all of a sudden, I just, just start feeling hot. Hot and kind of delirious. Hot and delirious. Hot. <laughs> so I had to go downstairs. I knew what it was. It was a sporadic anxiety attack. But when I went to the hospital on Monday, I told the lady, I need y'all to help me get this pain in my leg under control, y'all, because it's setting off my anxiety. When you have an anxiety disorder and that stuff is connected to your nerves, your this, your that, when you go into anxiety, y'all, everything, you just feel like your whole world is spinning out of control. So I wanted to take you guys back six years ago. Okay, I've never shared this story ever publicly like this i'm gonna take y'all back six years ago in my life i was quote unquote what they call normal okay waking up every day doing this doing that this is another story from the disheveled diva real hashtag real life six years ago november the 10th i woke up hungry the reason I say I woke up hungry is because that's the date that I woke up hungry, realized that, that I had I had an uh, anxiety, but I woke up hungry. So let me take you back to July of 2013. I was planning on going to Dallas, starting over, starting my life over, starting over, finna go to Dallas. And... I have been working on this plan since February of 2013. February of 2013, I have been working on this. Had my voucher, I was on Section 8 then, y'all. My voucher was finna transfer. My daughter, I was taking band with me because at the time, all I had was my two babies. So... My oldest daughter, she was going to stay with her dad because she would, didn't really want to go to Texas because she just thought it was going to be country or whatever. So that's fine. I have a relationship with her dad or whatever. I didn't have no problem with her staying with her dad. So, okay. Now we lead up to June the 4th when I'm supposed to leave. <laughs> Got my mega bus ticket book. Got my babysitter set up for Tweet and Bam, because Tweet was going to stay with her daddy. Bam was going to stay with my good friend until I got back, because I was only going to be gone a couple of days, y'all, just to go get everything situated with Dallas. Oh, yeah, and, and the thing about it is, I was looking so forward to starting over and having a new life, okay? So... The day I'm supposed to get ready to go out of town, I uh, get a text from my brother stating that he wasn't going to be able to pick me up. 
the night before I'm supposed to get on the bus in the morning, y'all. My ride chimes in and tells me that he could not pick me up. Okay, so he can't pick me up. And I wasn't going to live with him or anything like that, which is still strange to me till this day. Because we were very close. I wasn't going to stay. I was only going to be down there about three or four days. I had to. I had an appointment with the Section 8 people, y'all, to meet with them. I had an appointment with the Section 8 people to meet with them. To just get my voucher transferred down there. So then, I didn't go. So I ended up going back home. My mom comes, my family come and tell me that uh, my ex-husband gonna take my daughter. Now, we got 50-50 joint custody. How in the hell is my ex-husband gonna take my child? All because I'm going to try to better myself. Still puzzles to me to this day. Nobody still has the answers to this question. And this video is from 2019. But some of the things I'm dealing with is from 2013. A lot of unanswered questions. Why would you want to, somebody want to take their child? Why would somebody want to not see a person go do better? Okay? So, they come, come tell me he was going to take my daughter. So, long story short, I done had to call to get my voucher transferred back. Because they knew. I wasn't going to let my kids get separated. I wasn't going to let my kids get separated. My children mean everything to me. My children mean everything to me. And, um, um, so my children mean everything to me. So come to find out, I had to get my voucher transfer back here, y'all. And I'm sorry I'm telling this story kind of slow, but I am on my, um, I had to increase my anxiety medicine a little bit to something a little stronger so that I can, the muscles in my legs can stay calm. So, and it's been working, thankfully, for the past couple of days, since yesterday. So, um, anyway, I had to bring my voucher back from Texas, y'all. I had to call them people from Grand Prix, get all the stuff transferred back to St. Louis, go back to the St. Louis house and office sign the lease. So here I'm stuck in St. Louis. So then, okay, one day, I just woke up. I was on the phone talking to my sister, just talking about how I was frustrated, just was like, dang, I wanted to go to XYZ, blah, blah, blah. I'm on the phone talking to my sister, y'all. And then out of nowhere, I just started getting hot, mad, anxious, just feeling like I wanted to pass out. The best way I could describe my whole situation in 2013 from July up until November was close your eyes and imagine yourself spinning out of control and you fall on the ground. But the other part of you is that I'm standing up. It's like I'm standing up over my body. But she was down on the ground. She couldn't get up. I was woke and everything, but I could not get up. It was just like my life has spun. I guess because I was so angry and pissed and some just spun out of control. I went inward. If I can just tell y'all, I went inward. And... It was on from then. Then I moved at the end of July into my new house. The very first day there, a couple of days there, I was so happy, just so happy, so happy. Then here come that anxiousness gripping me again. It just was like fear and anxiousness messed up stomach. Fear, anxious, messed up stomach. Fear, anxious, not hardly want to eat. Messed up stomach, sweating. I'm like, what the hell is going on? I mean, it was, the anxiousness was just getting out of control. My guy, this friend, he uh, he got this song called Anxious Madness. And that's literally what was going on with me. A bunch of anxious madness, okay? A bunch of anxious madness. That's the best way I could describe it. 
And I didn't want to go, I didn't want to be on no medicine. I'm on no medication taking type of person, y'all. I didn't, nothing but ibuprofen and stuff like that. I never wanted to be on no type of medicine. AJ didn't want no medicine. She didn't want no medicine. She didn't want no medicine. But July didn't kick then. August then kicked in. September then kicked in. October then kicked in. November. By this time, I'm functioning, but I'm functioning like a person anxious. I'm functioning like a person anxious. I'm functioning like a person that was barely eating. By this time, I had lost weight. I had lost about 50 pounds because I was 148, 150 pounds. I thought I had only lost about 20 pounds, but when I got to the hospital, I had lost 50. Because I was getting trapped gas so bad every time I ate, I, every time I ate. I wanted to eat more, y'all, but I couldn't because my stomach was in balls. My stomach was in knots. My stomach was in balls. My stomach was in knots. I was just skinny. I was still in my right mind. I was getting up every day. I was doing for my kids. I never was feeling crazy. I just was anxious. When your ass is having anxiety, baby, you are like somebody just spinning the chair. When a person having an anxiety attack and a panic attack all at the same time, you just feel like everything's spinning, 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 like you ain't got no kind of control, okay? That's why when I go on to them anxiety attacks, rule number one, hit the flow. So you can fit, hit the flow, put something up against your back, peel in between your legs, and just lay there and rock until you get through. So in the beginning of November, I said, okay, um, I started having panic attacks. My AGG head came in there. And, um. I knew once I saw her, I knew it was going to be time for whatever this was to come to a head. So, I got down and I prayed. I was like, God, because see, I, I didn't want to go to the hospital because I knew it was going to be some salt in the game if I went to the hospital having anxiety and stuff. I had already said that some salt in the game was going to go down with my child. But then I had, bam, my four-year-old at the time. And I was like, you know what? I got to go to the hospital for her. Damn me. I got to go for her. So the night of like November the 8th, and I just got down and prayed. I prayed from November the 8th. I you know, just prayed November the 8th, November the 9th. November the 8th, that Friday. November the 9th was that Saturday. So I knew because I woke up at 1 o'clock in the morning with a panic attack real bad. I never was having no panic attacks, baby. So now I can move from anxiety to panic. Where my muscles locking, everything just locking. No. So I ended up, long story short, I ended up going to the hospital. It was not an easy task getting me to the hospital at all. My mother took me because I wasn't going to no ambulance. And I knew I wasn't going back to the other place we had tried before. No. So I, it kind of went the way that I wanted to this time. With the exception of when I got to the hospital. It was like my feet, I got cold feet. I could not go inside the hospital. I told my mother to take me back home. She wouldn't take me back home. She was not taking me back home. She wasn't taking me back home. So she didn't call my pops. And I knew once I saw him and my mama was crying, I already knew that I was going to get in that hospital come around and slit the snow. Lost so those short. My pops picked me up over his damn, he picked me up over his shoulder and took me right out in that hospital, baby. I'm going off on them, telling them they going against my patient right now because I'm looking a wreck and I'm used to being a glammed out. I was like, I think in my mind then I probably was thinking who the hell was going to see me. I really do because even though you got anxiety, you still got your sense of self, even though you look at crazy as hell. And I'm like, oh, Lord, I hope to nobody come in this hospital and see me like this because this this is some bull. This will be the last picture they would have, you know. But then I, I got out there, and they wanted me to take some medicine. I ain't want to take no medicine because I was not a medicine taker. I mean, I don't, I'm not going to lie. I didn't want no medicine. I knew eventually I probably was going to have to have some because it just seemed like 
my anxiety was so anxious, it was stopping me from living. So I knew I was going to have to take some medication, something I did not want to do. But if anybody out there, you suffering and struggling with anxiety, you don't know which way to go, you don't know which way to turn, baby. I don't care how much of a medicine taker you may not be, because I was not, okay? But I knew whatever was going on with my body at the time, I probably was going to have to have some medication for a little while. And boy, once they, I fought them, literally fought the nurses and everything because they were trying to make me take some medication without me wanting it. But they gave me a shot of medicine in my own one on November the 9th, 2013. And I was going off, going off, going off on the people telling them how they was going against my patient rights, all of this kind of stuff, okay? How they was going against my patient rights, baby, I was pissed. Because mind you, I used to work at a hospital, so y'all just going to give me some medicine and I ain't want no medicine. Mind you, I wasn't acting manic or anything like that. I just was hungry and I hadn't been out the house in a few months. So I did have agoraphobia, uh, agoraphobia a little bit, you know, because anxiety kind of make you like that because you feel like your world spinning around. So I think that's why a lot of people sometimes that suffer with social anxiety and stuff, you just always be so afraid of having anxiety attacks. That was another reason why I didn't want to go anywhere because sometimes people, y'all don't be understanding people with anxiety people with anxiety we not crazy you just be when I first got it I was scared of having an anxiety attack in front of people I was scared of being out somewhere having an anxiety attack but you gotta grip anxiety by the throat and tell anxiety so what if I have an anxiety attack, so what? Give me my medicine and let me keep on going. Because that's how I had to start talking to myself. Because I went from going out, catching the cat, da 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 me and my kids going to the movies, doing this, to just kind of being froze, stuck at home. And then when you get this crap, you got to come all the way back from it. Then everybody like, oh, you're not the same. Well, hell, she knows she ain't the same because now she got all anxiety disorder she got an anxiety disorder and y'all always think people with anxiety are faking you can't fake anxiety there's no way to fake no kind of anxiousness take it from me a person with an anxiety attack is almost as serious as somebody having a baby because they don't know what they're going to do. They brain don't know what to do. They feel like they lose the control. They about to die. Everything all at one time is panic, fear. You feel like you're about to use the bathroom on yourself. Your stomach messed up. Your head hurt. So don't ever sit here, people in this world, and try to think y'all can diagnose people with anxiety. Because it's bull. And you don't know what you're talking about. First of all, if you got somebody that you love that's going through anxiety or suffering with an anxiety disorder, read up on how the hell to help them, okay? Don't tell them that it's all in their mind because that's boo crap. And if it is all in their mind, they don't know how the hell it got there, but they ain't faking it, okay? So try to understand that people quit always trying to diagnose people and then you know what the hell you talking about with somebody else's body because you don't know, okay? Because that anxiousness and feeling out of control and that terror and all of that stuff, that's real. Ain't nobody making that up. You don't know what people going through or what's done triggered somebody to be having this. So first of all, you need to try to understand and you need to try to understand that person. You can't come in trying to demand. You got to understand because you don't want to be a trigger to that person. So they gave me that medicine on November the 9th. November the 10th, 2013, they tapped my thing. Hey, Miss So-and-So. Hi, I'm a guest. Are you hungry? Yes, I am. What? I said, yes, I am. What y'all want? What y'all got? She said, we got pancakes. We got this. We got that. I said, give me some pancakes and some bacon. And some, I said, I want some pancakes, bacon, and eggs. They brought me that pancakes, bacon, and eggs, baby. That was the best meal I had. Eight, 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 eight 
in months because I ate it and, and wasn't thinking twice. I wasn't thinking that it was going to make me anxious. I wasn't thinking I was going to get no trap gas because whatever that was, that lorazepam, I'll tell y'all, the lorazepam that they shot me in the arm with at that time was everything that I had prayed for. I asked God the night before, November the 8th, please give me my appetite back. I don't care about none of this other stuff. Give me my appetite back so I can function and be and be feeling like a human again. Cause I'm standing here 90 pounds. Knowing I love to eat. I was 94 pounds. Standing here, y'all, knowing I love to eat. Okay? So that's why it's called November the 10th, 2013. Our hashtag, I woke up hungry. I woke up hungry and I ate. And I have been eating every day since. And it's six years later. And it just amazes me because when I talk about it, I don't even know why I am teary eyed. But I, y'all, when you are hungry, that's why I tell people learn how to be thankful for the basic stuff. Because when you sitting up and you're anxious and you this and you that and you got all these fears going on because anxiety sometimes magnifies a person's fight or flight senses. Okay? Learn what you're talking about. A person with anxiety, we always seem like we chilling because we done went through what you talking about now. We done went through it two months ago. So we just at a level where we trying to deal with it, okay? It ain't, ooh, it ain't nothing bothering her, no. She's just trying to move on and keep moving. And she ain't trying to get stuck, okay? But but that medicine, that lorazepam at the time, it was the answer to my prayer along with the help of God and my spiritual mentors and stuff that I had, you know, my love and support team. I truly, truly thank God for that because I woke up hungry. I wasn't half hungry. I didn't, I didn't even remember that I wasn't hungry. So when I stand here and tell y'all today, um, that I know God. That I know, that I know, that I know, that I know. Okay. He brought me back to myself. I knew everything that was going on. I just looked like something was wrong with me. Because I was anxious. I was anxious. Had a bunch of anxious madness going on. Okay. So if y'all, if, if anybody out here listening to this video and you are struggling with anxiety, first of all, Tell anxiety, buck anxiety. You got to get to the point where you got to t take your life back. But first of all, you ain't going to take your life back if you don't confess out your mouth that I got anxiety. Hiding it, okay? People, listen to me good. Stop hiding your anxiety. It ain't nothing to hide. And when I was in my study classes, a whole bunch of everyday working people were in there. It wasn't a bunch of people in there like loopity, loopity, la, 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 Most of these people was on leave from their jobs and just stressed out good paying jobs. So don't say people is crazy because these are quote unquote regular people. And when I saw how many regular people had anxiety, that's when I realized how normal I was when I saw all of the regular people, and some of y'all will catch that later, but when I saw all of the regular people that had anxiety, I, that's when I realized how normal I was. That's when I no longer became embarrassed to tell nobody, okay? That's what I had to do. That's what you gotta do. You gotta read up on what the hell you got, cause if you don't, It'll overtake you. Stop being so afraid. You reach the hell out to somebody. If anybody got any questions for me, I'm an open book. I can talk you through your anxiety. That's why I want to be like a, a, um, a motivational speaker, a life coach. I want to be an advocate for anxiety because I went through it. People was looking like, first of all, who can make up losing 90 pounds? She want, I'm not going crazy. She's just anxious. It's just a bunch of 
anxious madness going on in her life right now. And she's scared. He's scared. She's scared to tell y'all. She's scared to let y'all know what the hell is going on with her. Because she's scared of y'all talking about her, running her down like a dog, telling all her business. So that's why people with anxiety keep you blocked out. Because we so scared of y'all going around your mouth. Just go try to understand what the hell that person is dealing with. Stop talking about them, trying to beat them down. That don't work with people with anxiety. When you beating a person over the head, yelling at them, that's triggering them. You're driving them crazy. Stop. And that's the best advice I can give you. If you got people around you that don't understand what you're going through, get them out your circle. Because now that you got anxiety, you got to have somebody around you that know how to go in your purse. Your purse. And get your little white pill and stick it under your tongue now. Because now that you got anxiety, my daughter, my daughters, got to know, hey, if mommy gets to having anxiety and panicking, mommy gets to get, getting anxious, go in my purse, give me my pill, put it under my tongue. Mommy, why you take that? Because baby, they say I got an anxiety disorder. They say I have an anxiety disorder. And the thing about it is, they've been denying my disability for six years. For six years, I've been making it. But for the past two years, I have been going through some issues with homelessness and all that other stuff because I lost my Section 8. And I started telling y'all the story. I don't keep it a secret anymore because clearly these are things that I need to talk about. So shout out um, to Miss Faith and Real Diamond. Y'all comments and just being supportive to me have really been pressing me toward the next thing that I know that I'm supposed to be doing. And I don't care if I only help one person. Learn and the first step to anxiety is to admit that you got anxiety. It's so many regular people with anxiety. You really would realize how normal you are. You're normal. Regular, irregularly, rip regular, imperfectly perfect, but at the end of the day, you normal. Get you some people around you that know how to help you when you go into your anxious madness. I hadn't had an anxious madness episode since I was probably pregnant with my daughter, my four-year-old now. That was only because I got stripped off the medication from her because I was pregnant and they couldn't give me that. But Friday, I had a bunch of anxious madness going on. So anybody suffering with anxiety, anybody suffering with a bunch of anxious madness, to hell what everybody going to think about you. It's a lot of regular people. A lot of regular people. A lot of regular people going through anxiety. And that's the problem with the generations before us. They weren't speaking out because people were embarrassed because I was embarrassed about that person. You feel all like you crazy. Forget all that pride and bull crap. I didn't know it was pride. I'm just saying, forget all that. And go get you a therapist and help. Your, you got to help yourself. Because it ain't as bad as it seems. It is when you're going through it. And I've even got to the point where I learned how to talk myself through it. And then in 2014, I met my baby girl. I met her father. And um, when I first met him, I told him I had him go get my medicine. And I just felt comfortable with him. And he didn't he didn't judge me. He went and he got it. He wasn't like, what's this? Is this your crazy medicine? He didn't do nothing. Because I couldn't lie to him about what it was. And we live in a Google generation where people can just get on Google and Google what the hell you have medicine for. So since he was going to pick up all the rest of him, I told him. 
I got anxiety disorder and I take a pill up under my tongue. Yes, I do. To keep from being her wig and all that. It is what it is. I'm not finna, you know, sugarcoat it. But he was very supportive. He was very supportive. And the more and the closer that me and him got, the closer that me and him got, um, some days it was like my anxiety wasn't that bad because when me and him first got together, I was in the face of it where I wasn't riding in the car that much. Riding in the car was scary to me. I don't know what the hell for, but in the car, I felt like I didn't have no room. I felt like I didn't have no room. I don't know why the hell I still can't explain it to this day. I just felt like I didn't have no room. Then I felt, felt like I didn't want to go around his family having no anxiety attacks or none of that. But then once I had met his brother and his sister-in-law and stuff, they, they welcomed me and they didn't judge me. So I felt safe at their house because his his um i just say my sister-in-law my sister-in-law is a nurse and my brother they made me feel so welcome we never even talked about me having anxiety i think me and my sister matter of fact me and my sister talked about it me and my sister-in-law talked about it one time because while i was over there i think i did start to kind of have one one time where you had those little panicky feelings but eventually it passed, you know. But sometimes, you know, she and she didn't judge me. And he didn't judge me. So there was a place I could go. I felt comfortable. Eventually, God blessed me to be able to ride again. Thanks to two of my sisters, who I really want to give a shout out to them. For coming along in 2016 when I was going through something. Didn't know where I was going to stay and stuff. Had to wait on the place to get ready. I just want to send a shout out to my Starks sisters and my Starks family. Because they welcomed me into the family. They picked me up and I had to stay with my sister for about 30 days. And I believe this is why God did that. Because... After they got through giving me rides places, I felt safe riding in the car with them. After that, about a month or so, I was riding back. I, after I had moved, I started catching the cab. I started letting my friend pick me up. I started not being afraid because I already told myself what the worst was that could happen. But then, then I told myself, look, my kids need to go to McDonald's. I want to go have some fun. So buck, you anxiety. I'm sick of it. I'm sick of it. I had to go have some fun. My kids don't want to be stuck in the house. But I just wanted to see say thank you to everybody who helped me during that time. No, no judgment. No bashing over the head. Y'all just stepped in and helped me. And I didn't even know my Stark sisters, my Stark family was going to help me like that. And they just been so understanding the whole time. And I just want to say that I love y'all. If y'all see this video, I just want to say that I love y'all. Because sometimes when you're suffering with anxiety and your body that went through a, a, a change and stuff, you start to feel unloved. So, um, Tink, I wanted to say... Um, Thank you. Thank you for stepping in <laughs> at a time in my life when it was truly a bunch of madness going on, just like on the inside of me. I stayed calm. And he may not have been the best guy, but he supported me through my stuff. And when I had his child in my stomach, we had disagreements, but for the most part, we did really, really good together. And while I was going through it, y'all, he was right there 
by my side, rubbing my belly. It was like my daughter father would be on one side and bam, be right there on the other. So it was like I had love on the right side and I had love on the left and I had Gabby in my belly. And all along I'm thinking, baby, why you want me to be your mama? But then Gabby came along and um, it was like I got a lot, another sister uh, back in the house. I had another daughter. You know, I got another daughter. And she made me. I just had a person that I had to take care of. So people with anxiety. I know y'all sitting around saying, no, you don't need love. Yes, you do. Love heals. And the words tell you that. And I can tell I am a true testimony of that. Love does heal. When you got love and people around you that you feel like love you, you stay mellow. You stay mellow, you know. And somebody who understands, girl, you don't want to ride in the car? Come on, baby, let's go for a walk. Or come on, baby, let's go for a ride for 10 minutes. Or come on, come on, um, AJ, we're going to take you. And my house ain't number 15 minutes away. I put my music on. I had my phone. My daughter father was in the back holding my hand. And my brother was driving. And I got to the point where it, it started not to be so scary, you know. And it was a process, but I thank God for that, you know. And it is what it is, because baby, by the time you get on Facebook, that's why I'm one of them people I have to keep my phone. I like my phone. Because, you know, you have to just do something to distract yourself. Put your favorite music on at night. Put you some meditation music on whatever it is. And when you start going through them isolated phases... Don't stay isolated. Even if you got one or two people, you can call over to be around you. Just call. Because, Tink, all I used to have to say was, hey, babe, my anxiety tripping. And he would he say, okay, I'm on my way. He never asked a bunch of questions, and he lay right there by me until the anxiety subsided. So what I'm saying is, God give you some people to ride out this wave of your life with you or whatever it is that you think may have changed or whatever it is I didn't quote unquote know what what it was going to be I didn't know when I met Tink he was going to end up being one of my um, best friends because he rolled that phase of my life out with me so if anybody mad about me using his name it's the truth because he wrote it out with me. And I didn't even have to ask him twice. I didn't have to ask him none. So I guess that's why I looked out for him so much. Because it was like we formed a little family. Bow and we just clicked with each other. So sometimes things that may look a little weird to other people. You don't know what the other person is getting out of it. So just fall back and leave people alone. Thank you to everybody who stepped in in my life during that time. Because during 2014, I started to come back. I started to come back slowly but surely. By 2015, I was getting to riding in cars again. 2016, I'm riding. After a while, it wasn't even scary no more. Because once you get to your brain, this is the norm. Uh, AJ, this is the norm, riding in cars and on the buses. This is how you get to where you got to go. See, this is what you got to tell yourself. I had to tell myself, look, this is how I got to get to work. So whether I'm anxious on this bus, I got to go make this check for my daughter. I got to go take care of my kids. And that's what you got to tell yourself. That's how you say, book Anxiety, anxiety. You tell anxiety, all right, if me and you going to wrestle today, the then it is what it is after a while, whatever. You try to wake me up with it. it uh, and then after a while, you may be anxious. Your first couple of bus rides. But then after that, it eventually it becomes your norm. And you will be at peace with it. I never knew I was going to have somewhere I was going to be agoraphobic. What? Me? No, I ain't never been agoraphobic. Yeah, but you don't never know. So that's why I say Stop judging people. Protect your peace. If you got anybody around you that's toxic, bringing more toxins to toxin, toxicity. I'm sorry, I can't say the word toxicity. You know, I took that medicine. Toxicity, but basically toxicness, okay? A bunch of toxic BS. 
to your life, leave them alone. Because if a person ain't adding value to your life, now we all going to go through disagreements. I'm not saying that. But if you are around some type of narcissistic person that's getting their issues off on you, that's why you building them up, they lowering you, get the hell away from them. Person you study trying to hold on to and they don't want to be here on to get the hell away from them, leave them the hell alone because that's probably why your anxiety all triggered off because of them. Because some people in your life is triggers. That's a, why a lot of times people with anxiety don't want to deal with nobody because people are triggered, you know. So get to the point in your life where you take yourself back. In 2020, this is the year of self-care. This is the year of girl power, the year of the girl boss. I don't care what nobody say. If you sitting there feeling like you can't conquer anxiety, you can't be anxiety, look at me. I did it, and I'm still dealing with it, but it's way better than what it was. I'm able to tell people about it because I want to be able to help somebody else not be so embarrassed about it because everybody got anxieties, but some of our anxieties are in overdrive. That's what happened to me. My fight or flight senses, bow, went in overdrive with each other because sometimes if you're too careful and too worrying and worrying and careful, that sends you into anxiety too. Now, that's why I just be trying to be chilling. If you don't love me and want to be with me, so be it. If you don't want to be around me, so be it. Okay, your wish is granted. You don't want me in your life, your wish is granted. You want to not do nothing, your wish is granted. If you, if he want to block you out, his wish is granted. Because while you study trying not to grant his wish, he study, they study. People just study trying to bring you down and deposit in toxicness. And you forget all of that. Start taking yourself back. Be strong for you and your kids. This is part one. Till she woke up home. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate y'all taking the time to just view my channel. And any if y'all got if y'all anybody got any questions or anything, my life is an open book. I will answer all y'all questions. I ain't gonna lie to you about nothing. If you need some help getting through this, first of all, call a therapist, okay? And go to outpatient treatment. Or if you if you don't know what to do, make your first step. A call to the emergency room. A call to the BHR, the suicide hotline. Call the suicide hotline. Even though you ain't committing suicide, they will still get you the help you need. All this starts with is a call. Call the therapist. Call the emergency department. And ask to speak to a nurse, okay? Hey, I need some help. I think I got anxiety and I can't get out this house. You will get some help, okay? So stop sitting there being afraid. Take yourself back. Stop thinking about all 500 things that can happen. Don't think about the 50 steps you got to take. Just think about the first step in front of you. And all the other 49 are lined up. So I love y'all. Thank you for your views. Real Diamond Faithful Wisdom. I love y'all so much. Y'all encouragement just mean a lot to me. My subbies, I really, really appreciate that. Anything else you want to hear about? If y'all want part two to this, let me know. And it will be on the way. I have enjoyed vlogging to y'all today. I love you guys.